How's it going everybody? My name is Liam and today we're going to take a little look at Horizon Zero Dawn. Now before we get started, just so you all know, there's no story spoilers or anything like that. I'm just showing you a bit of the gameplay, some of the mechanics and some of the things that make this game really cool. So you haven't got to worry about spoilers here at all. So I'm about, I think, maybe 10 hours in or something like that. So... You know, some of the people who are only just starting to play this will be seeing things they haven't seen yet. So, trying to keep it spoiler-free as much as I can. But all of this footage was recorded through the PS4, and I'm kind of just talking over it. And I've never recorded a video this way before. I usually talk and play at the same time. So, I mean, we'll just have to see how it goes, I guess. As you can see here, like, the, a really big part of this game is crafting. And I thought going in oh my god i'm gonna hate this because games like um like the survival crafting thing i'm so kind of done with that at the minute but i really like how tastefully it's done here as you can see like from what's on the screen at the minute you've got all these upgrades and stuff you can get to hold more ammo ho hold more resources all that kind of thing and the, the reason it works so well, I think, is because it's not boring to do. Because most of the stuff you collect is through killing the machines that you can see here. There's a watcher there who's trying to spot us. And this is one of the cool mechanics, Override. It has different effects on different machines, but the general gist of it is you make them not be bad guys anymore. And what I've done to that watcher is he's basically, he's um, on our team now. You can only do it when you're in this stealthy mode, but he'll fight with us and keep a lookout for enemies for us. But I accidentally alerted that dude, so had to shoot him in his eyeball, sadly. As you can see there, you, you want to be looting pretty much everything you see, because... That's how you get the majority of your resources in the game. But that's the, <laughs> that's the thing I've noticed most about the time I've spent with the game so far. I, I've put a fair bit of time into it already, but I've barely touched any story. I've done a, maybe, I don't know, five story missions, something like that. And most of my time has just been exploring because I've just had so much fun exploring the world. Like... Everything is just so beautiful and it feels cohesive. You can see why the game took Gorilla so long to make because it feels like a world you haven't been in before. And I kind of love that. So I'm at the bit here, I think. Yeah, this is where we shank a fox. There is, there is melee combat in this. Like you have a spear which also can be upgraded, but... I would say around 90% of what you're going to be doing combat-wise is all kind of range-based. You have all these different uh, weapons that are all upgradable and customizable with like different gems and stuff to give them different abilities and stuff. And that's all done kind of at range. So you have your bow, you have things there like you can see the shock uh, shock wire, which is from a trip caster is the device. And you can see I'm going to set a trap here for these two sawtooths where I just put a basically electric fence and then I'm going to try and lure him away. Because something you find quite early on is the the game isn't... It's not hard per se, but it punishes... It punishes stupidity, is how I'd say it. Like, these guys here, they will wreck you if you're, if you're not careful. So, like, these are kind of some of the sort of mid-range mid-range machines and if you're not if you're not careful and you make mistakes they will take you down you can't you can get away with like there's plenty of healing items and that kind of thing and you can always craft more but you don't want to be caught short without supplies of that sort of stuff but as you see here i'm trying to pull him towards the the trip wire which i did there and then try to go for a jump and attack and missed but we got the critical attack in, which is one of the upgradable skills. And now I've pissed him off, so he's after me, sadly. And there, I did the very intelligent thing of trying to shoot him with a piece of rope, and I t and I messed up. But something, one of the cool things you'll see, as you can see here, you have like different types of um, arrows and stuff, and you can slow down time to help with you actually, which is great for people like me who's just useless with um, with aiming and. 
like, um, especially on console games. But these two guys were blocking my route off of uh, going towards a mission objective, so, I mean, they had to die. It's often advisable, if you can, to just not always fight fight enemies, especially if you see them in big, big groups, because, as I say, they can absolutely wreck you, so often it's a good idea to just try and avoid fighting at all, but sometimes, you you know, you don't have a choice, or you want to be farming for experience. As you saw there, I was on the fly uh, creating ammo for the weapon. You don't... Yeah. I didn't expect him to do that, as you can see. I set the trap for him, and being an intelligent little bugger that he is, he jumped over my electric fence, but he didn't think to jump back over it when he came back after me. As I was saying, yeah, you can craft ammo for your weapons on the fly, so as long as you always have plenty of... Uh, plenty of supplies like your wood and wire and all that kind of stuff then you're pretty much golden like you'll never find yourself caught short in the middle of a battle with no ammo which is good and you can upgrade how much ammo you can carry all that kind of stuff as you can see can't aim for shit which is embarrassing but something you might have just seen there is you saw parts flying off off of the machine and that's one of the really cool things like all of the uh all of the machines have their own weak spots and different attributes and stuff. This guy is weak to fire, so it's doing constant damage and melting his armor. So I'm just... He, for some reason, he was just eyeing me up and not charging towards me. I don't know if it's because he could see the shock wire and didn't know how to get to me. But he just kind of stood there, so I sort of shot him from a distance. But yeah, they all have their own weaknesses, which you can scan with R3 to have a look at the different... Um, different spots on them and that'll show their weaknesses there's that like yellow thing on the back on its ass there which you can shoot and that'll do a bit of extra damage and it'll help you drop them just a little bit quicker there you go we finished him off and I got extra experience as you can see there for getting a burn and kill and you get a trophy I think for killing them so many enemies from what they're weak to but there's something kind of satisfying about about the collecting systems in this. As you see there, I was holding up on the D-pad. That was to replenish your stamina. You can collect these herbs, the ones I'm picking up now, to fill a medicine pouch, and you can just hold up to um, heal. That's the green bar underneath my health. Shows you how much like medicine you have on you. And you can just use that to heal on the fly. As well as you can pick up um, health potions, which you can buy in buying craft and stuff as well yeah that was the, this is the story mission objective so i thought i'll leave that and we'll go off in the other direction because you get rewarded for just going off and exploring around half of the side missions i've done so far i found just by not going where i was supposed to heading off and having a wonder and seeing what i could find and it's just the world's so pretty i that's kind of how I wanted to play this anyway. And from what I'm reading like, in reports and reviews and stuff, the game's like 30, 40 hours long. And I can imagine most of that is just because you're doing things like this, you're doing these pan shots. Now that here, what I've just uh, highlighted, is, an, is a monster I hadn't actually fought yet until I recorded this. And I didn't know what to do, but it had a massive like, glowing yellow thing on its bum. So I thought... Do you know what the probably best solution is? Maybe shoot it in the butt. Probably the way to go. Fire bellow back it was. But a lot of the machines, like if they detect you, especially the smaller ones, they'll actually run away. They're kind of pack animals. Um, some of the ones like the grazers and that, they'll they'll just do a runner and they won't actually engage with you. As you can see there, you can uh, using your focus, you can highlight the route of some animals, like as they patrol around the area and you can use that to set your traps which is super useful so you can see the sort of purple arrow on the floor that's where he's going to be walking and then i can set my electric wire trap and that'll stun him for a few seconds which can be really handy for especially for dealing dealing with the bigger monsters that you want to get a free hit on or if you want to plan a stealthy route and avoid a fight you can you know work your way through the bushes and stuff like that 
yeah, as you can see there, I'm aiming for, like, hopefully for its weak point. And then the bastard sets me on fire. Because he's pretty massive. Say, so, this is, like I said, this is the first time I fought him. But as you saw, I managed to set fire to his tank, which was carrying fluid in its back. And it took off, like, a massive chunk of its health. So, this game really rewards thinking about how you're going to approach and fight rather than just kind of turning up and winging it, which is how I usually like to play games, I'll be honest. But as you're thinking about what you're doing, as I say, you get plenty of wind up for their attacks and stuff. So, as long as you think about what you're doing, it's, I think it's quite forgiving, but it definitely punishes mistakes. So there, there's no, um, this wasn't part of a mission or anything, it's just often when you fight kind of the bigger creatures they'll drop loot which will be really useful for crafting your upgrades that you need, which is kind of great. Yeah, I don't, I'm not intending on doing like a, a review or anything like that, I don't know if I'll do any more content past this video for this game I just kind of wanted to show off a little bit of how awesome it is really because I've been having so much fun with it so far we've been really spoiled this year for games from start to fin you know Resi and Yakuza and and this just it's been a fantastic year so far for games but there you go that was just a little peek at Horizon Zero Dawn hope you enjoyed the video thank you for watching my name's Lim and I'll see you guys next time